Hello, beloveds. Thank you for joining us today for a Starseed Disclosure. We have our guest, Tiffany, here. Hello, Tiffany. Hi. So um, we're really excited to talk to you today. And you were describing um, in before um, just some experiences you have. And I'm excited to ask you more about those. But um, first off, I want to just ask, um, do you identify as a Starseed? Um, I do and I don't. I have a thing about identification and I just try and spend more time doing what I'm meant to do versus like trying to identify myself. But I mean, it, yeah, I, I would identify if if there was a label put on it. Yeah, that makes sense. I think a lot of people feel the same. Um, it's just up to you, I guess. So yeah, do you want to maybe just go ahead and start in with your story about what um, what your experiences have been or what you what you want to talk about and um, we'll go from there. Okay. Um, well, when I was young, I had, I had a lot of contact like with angels, like angelic beings um, and religion wasn't a thing in my family. So it was just things that were coming in and happening and nobody was there to explain to me what exactly that was. And then when I was like 14, I started having really bad sleep paralysis and I would have like these beings come to me or I would wake up in like all white hospital looking rooms and like hear different sounds like in the room, like clickings or whatever, like it sounded like some kind of machine. And um, then around 18, I started working graveyard and the sleep paralysis kind of slowed down through my entire life. Like it went from like, three times a night to like once every two months and then when I was 18 I started working graveyard and I uh that had a huge mental shift on me and that's when I really started being visited by beings like I started meditating and like on chakras and everything and then like I would just contact like Pleiadian beings mostly I would always see this woman and she would like explain to me how she was kind of like a mother towards me and she uh she kind of I don't really know how they do it, of course, but they like implant themselves, their DNA into yours so that you would like have their energetic outline in your DNA. And that's kind of what she did for me. And I really have a close connection with her. And um, yeah, that's really when it all started. And I went through a huge Kundalini awakening at that time. That's amazing. Um, do you think that those early angelic experiences were the Pleiadians or do you think they were another group of individuals? Um, I think they were a lot of the angels. Like I have a huge connection with like Michael and Gabriel and Uriel. So I think they were a lot of the angels and possibly the Pleiadian mother that I was speaking to as well. So some of those experiences sound really amazing while others sound really terrifying, like the sleep paralysis and stuff. Um, do you think that there's like a lot of different types of beings or do you think um, like, what do you think that's all about? Like your sleep paralysis and those hospital experiences? Yeah, the paralysis I think was more something that I wasn't in control of. Like that was out of my free will. I wanted to have wanted to do that. And to this day, I still don't know exactly what was going on during that and I don't know I haven't contacted those beings directly but like the beings that I contact now it's all like I'm conscious during the whole thing so like when I was in paralysis I wasn't I wasn't like aware of what who exactly it was I couldn't ask questions and they wouldn't like respond back or anything. so I mean I still really don't have an explanation for who they were or what they were doing exactly yeah that sounds really scary um did you what age did this all start um, the paralysis was around 14, maybe even a little earlier than that. And then I kind of like got control and I would, I would learn to contact angels when I was in paralysis and they would come in the room and then I would be instantly like awake in my bedroom and everything would be fine. That's amazing. I think a lot of people would be helped to know that technique. How did you, how did yeah. you manage to, um, to get the angels on your side during that time? Um, I would really just try and feel their presence like I would like just say the name Christ in my head and it was like the sleep paralysis was just gone like it, the whole experience was just over and I was awake and I felt better and then like slowly through doing that it just stopped and like I haven't had paralysis in at least a year 
So you were talking about doing the graveyard shift and that changed your conscious perception. Do you think that's because you were awake at night more when your sleeping patterns were disrupted? Or what do you think um, is the reason for that? Yeah, I think it was a, a lot of that. I was a little disoriented too. And um, I think we're used to sleeping at, sleeping at night and then like having sunlight throughout the day. I wasn't getting any sunlight. I was just sleeping all day. And it was just a weird like flip around on my whole energy spectrum. So it was just things happened really fast. And then I wasn't really like working at night because it was really slow. So I wasn't really doing much. I was just like sitting in meditation all night throughout eight hours so the meditation was probably what brought me into that a lot sooner that's really cool so when you say that you are having experiences and contacting these beings um do you do that in meditation trance states do you do it in sleep states do you do it fully awake do you actually see them what is that like um i usually see them in my mind's eye like i'm i can close my eyes and just see um almost like a vortex in my third eye. And I feel like I could travel through that. And then beings like travel from where they come from. And like, we kind of meet in the center and then we can communicate. But like, I could always feel like I'll work with certain beings at different times. So I could feel like um, if I feel their presence, I just know they're there. Even if I'm like just cleaning around the house, I know they're like, they're still talking to me. So even if I'm doing something, I'll still be like, having these mental conversations sometimes too. But when I do it in meditation, I see like their full figure usually or their aura in my third eye. Yeah, that's pretty similar to how I experience it as well. It's just kind of this constant line that you have. Um, yeah. Do you think you have any past lives with the Pleiadians? Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of past lives of me on, on like Sirius is what I believe to be Sirius because I've seen a lot of I've seen myself as like a small blue person quite often. And then like, I remember doing meditations before where I would travel on the lee lines to the different planets. And I would like, like during past life meditations, I would um just like travel to where I've been on different planets. And it was like different lee lines that were connecting them all to one thing. So, and I saw, I have a huge connection with Sirius. So I, I saw a lot on Sirius through meditation. That sounds really awesome. So when you're talking about those lines, you mean in this life you were able to travel along those lines to go to your past lives? Yeah. Yeah, but it's all it's still all kind of like synchronistically happening in one moment, you know, because time is time is weird, a weird thing to bring up. But um, I still see it as happening now, like what was going on in the past is still happening in this present moment in some form. Yeah, I've heard um, a lot of Pleiadian energies especially talk about that timelessness and the and being able to be outside of time and, and I mean a lot they all talk about that um, yeah. so that's that's a really cool and interesting thing to imagine and then um, my next question is did you experience any changes after each of these experiences like did you um, suddenly develop you know an interest in certain things and um, you know that would be for asking about the um, the sleep paralysis aspect and then also with the with the later Pleiadian aspect and did you ever get any like psychic gifts or um and also does that Kundalini awakening tie into that um yeah I got I mean I see myself as an intuitive healer like I'm really good at just like feeling a person's energies and like feeling psychologically why they may feel that way and like giving them the correct words to like make them feel better like speech and words and like poetry and writing is like how I kind of like to reach people because it just comes in like a flow it's like a stream of energy that just like comes out and I could like help somebody by what I have to say so I think that was a huge gift and um I saw the the first interview that you did the woman was pregnant I'm actually 31 weeks pregnant right now too and I before I got pregnant I was having a contact with a prey mantis being and he was explaining to me how um I mean he they don't really speak English much at all it's all just like telepathic images but he kind of showed how if I decided to conceive that he would imprint himself into the child and then it would bring um more nature more healing for the nature on earth like that's what the baby's like mission kind of seems like it is to me and since then I've just been like doing so much research into like herbal medicine and like 
how the pharmaceutical industry is just like manipulating lots of people's emotions and it's just really sad so I, I really want to get into herbal studies and herbal medicine so I could teach my child and he could start that at a young age that's amazing and I, I love that story um I think a lot of people would be kind of wary to have their child imprinted with a praying mantis being. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really excited to see all these kids um, coming along now who are just totally coming from space and with these space yeah. connections. So um, really look forward to that. That's so exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, okay, let's see. How, what about, the, um, can you describe that Kundalini awakening you were saying before? Like, how did that come about and what did that mean to you? What did it look like for you? Um, it was, it was really intense. Like it, it came about like quickly, like I started just intuitively carrying around crystals and I had no idea like crystals held energy, but I had like this little purple bag of crystals that my dad gave me when I was younger. And, like my dad's like completely in tune with everything. And he, he never really explained anything to me, but he just, um, he would just say little tiny things to plant seeds to like get me on the right path sometimes. And he gave me this little bag of crystals and I would, I just like all of a sudden one day was like, I need to carry this around. So I carried that around for like five months and then um, things just started getting really strange. My contacts started getting more controllable and like I could just close my eyes and instantly like contact the angelic beings. And then I was seeing like my childhood and how it was like, manifesting into like the past present and future was just manifesting into the present moment and uh it was kind of lonely because my friends like I didn't tell anybody what I was going through or anything and then one night we were hanging out and just I just broke down crying and was like you guys I've been going through so much stuff like there's aliens and like this galactic federation of aliens we're supposed to save the earth and um yeah that's that was really intense when I actually finally came out and told somebody about it. Then it got 10 times more intense. And I just felt like I was being intuitively guided to do everything, you know, to get my life on the right track. What What do you think um, spurred that on? Was there like something that you experienced or something that you read? Did your diet change? Uh, I think that did have a lot to do with it. Yeah, when I was 14, when I started getting into sleep paralysis, I started, um, I stopped eating meat. So I, and I'm now 21, turning 22 in April. So I haven't had meat in like seven years. And then when I was 18, I started eating a lot better, like a lot healthier once I had a job to like be able to go out and buy my own stuff. And like that, that had, had a lot to do with it. Just plant-based foods that like raise your alkaline levels and raise your vibration. So I, yeah, diets, everything to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I found the same. And I think a lot of people have as well. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, that's um, kind of all the questions I have specifically about that. Um, but have you ever been or taken up on a ship? Um, yeah, I remember this one time I had sleep paralysis and it was more of like a comforting feeling and it was, I was in a hospital room, it sounded like, and, um, the next day I went over to my neighbor's house and they were like, oh, there was some, this crazy UFO, like floating over the house all night. And I was like, well, that's ironic. Like pretty sure I was in there. <laughs> So that was like a confirmation that what I was going through was like definitely abduction. Yeah. And is that very common for you to see UFOs? Yeah. Especially during the summertime or like if I'm out in nature, mostly I'll see them. Um, even sometimes during the day, I would see just like ships fly by and everyone around me just like kind of is walking around and I'm like, nobody sees this. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, do you have any like, um, book recommendations or, um, you know, different kinds of media or content that you really enjoy that you think more people should should read or watch? Um, I think Deepak Chopra is amazing. I love I love those books like and it, like the way he goes about it is just like a simple a simple way of life just to like manifest what you want. And it's just so simple like and happy. There's nothing like 
some people feel like, oh, you have to do this and this and this and this. Like, it's just an easy walk that you can take and to get yourself up there on the right path. That's awesome. So earlier you said that you have like a lot of intuitive healing um, powers. And I'm wondering, do you do, you do like um, professional healing services online or do you have any services that are similar that um, we can tell people watching about now? Um, I can do, I do light language videos to like help people get into like deep meditations. Um, and we also, me and my boyfriend, we make um, wire wrapped crystals like pendants. And we, I really like to just encode some of the beings information that I'm communicating with into the crystals and like give them out to more to people. Like I've given out more, more crystals and jewelry than I have actually sold to people. Cause I just feel like they should have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Where can we find those light language videos? Um, I have my page. It's Enlightenment and Kefir on Facebook, or they could just search my name on Facebook as well. It's uh, Tiffany, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y, Lehu, L-A-G-U-E. And I have all those videos uploaded and saved on there. Awesome. How, how exciting. Well, it's so awesome to meet you, and I'm um, just so honored to meet you. It sounds like um, you're connected to some really cool beings, and I love these stories. Um, do you have any advice for anybody who would want to be connected to higher beings? Um, diet. I would really just watch what you eat, because cleaning out your insides just helps so much in getting you to be able to actually communicate with them so you don't want any stagnant or energetic blocks in your body that are preventing you from seeing what's going on around you because i think we're all surrounded by beings all the time it's just whether our bodies and minds are clear enough to be able to see it and communicate with it awesome well it's such a pleasure to meet you thank you so much yeah you too thank you <laughs> see ya bye